Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying SmartCon. You know, it feels like two minutes since the last one, but you know, it's really good that Chainlink set up these events and happy to be presenting today. So I'm Janet. I am the founder of Linkpool, and I'm ex excited to be showing you about Nodes of Service today. Um, it's something that we've talked about a long, long time ago, so i um, happy to be showing it. So what is Node as a Service? So we first announced this in 2018. Um, I, I mean, I suppose you could argue that we announced it way too early and we, yeah, we sort of did, but you know, it, it wasn't wasted. We've spent a lot of time thinking about this when it's right. And you know, the, the time is right now. Um, really looking forward to actually showing this a bit more, telling you what it's about. The, the whole idea is a one-click deploy solution for Chainlink nodes. So um, really just lowering the entry requirements for people to get involved in the Chainlink network. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of like the ph uh, philosophy of Chainlink itself, like rather than needing to worry about the infrastructure, it just lets the developers build the app and nodes of service is very much within that ethos. You know, it just lets developers actually spin up nodes, worry about how they're going to integrate Chainlink and not anything else because, you know, everything else is, is taken care of. So, um, Linkpool is a company. We was the first third-party Chainlink focused company, which um, is pretty awesome to see, especially uh, now in 2021 after Chainlink's growth. You know, ever since we started, we've been building tools and thinking about how to sort of um, grow the ecosystem around Chainlink, how how to get more people involved, you know, how to make it easier for people, more integrations, and you know, bottom line as well, running reliable and uh, secure nodes that we run across multiple different blockchain networks. To talk about the initial problems with NAS, and this sort of goes back to why we didn't really sort of um, release this in 2018. The initial idea with it had too much centralization risk. And you know, what I mean by that is if Linkpool itself as a company was the only people offering nodes as a service, then you know, the more that service grows, the more potential there is for centralizing the network, which obviously is is anti ethos against everything sort of Chainlink and, and the whole crypto space is doing. Um, I feel like our idea with nodes of service as well to begin with was way too narrow in scope, and we was thinking very small picture, just you know offering. Um, Chainlink nodes um, requiring a, a subscription for it and not really thinking about the bigger picture to how that product and the tools we build around it really you know fit in place to, to grow the ecosystem with Chainlink. And another big point, and this will be emphasized like later on in the presentation, is we was missing the market at the time of you know, we first announced nodes of service. And that's important because the market is like the unifier of, of all of these different ecosystem products. It, it could be staking, it could be nodes of service, it could be like what SDL showed earlier with reputation, like we're glad to be working with them. Um, the market is, you know, we're pitching that as the central hub to be able to search, discover, and, and really to get involved with Chainlink as a network, and we miss that. And, you know, what we're thinking about with nodes of service now really ties into the market. You know, before when we was um, announced it and thinking about it way back in 2018, we didn't have that. So the the idea for where we're pushing nodes of service is is really a self service model and a model what is I suppose more like Ethereum smart contracts in that people can just be really involved and roll chaining count and dons into production with not bringing many other people you know, into the picture to be able to roll out and get that into production. Um, so that might be, you know, the data sources you use, the different node operators that you might need to get in touch with to support a job or a feed, for example. Um, the integration, if you're doing something custom with different data sources that might not yet be supported. Um, we really want to sort of abstract that away from everyone who wants to get involved with Chainlink and really think about how to make that entire user journey much easier for people to get to the point where they you know, have an idea for an application on a different blockchain network, they want to build it and they can roll out Chainlink and really sort of do it you know, by themselves without bringing anyone else on board, which is um, an important point to, for you know, Chainlink scaling for the years to come and really sort of seeing it grow. 
the whole idea with where we want to take Nodes as a service in the future is, is people deploying their, you know, their decentralized Oracle network, their DOM by themselves, um, really end to end, you know, from um, picking your nodes, deploying it and, and getting a production ready um, Oracle network out of the back of it. To give a bit of a backstory of what we, you know, what we've been doing as a company. So we started in 2017 when um, Chainlink first came onto the scene. Um, I went full-time in 2018 after a crowd sale. We've really been thinking about how we can sort of build tools and do everything we can do to support Chainlink and build the ecosystem out. We released the market in 2019, which has changed an awful lot since then. We've been working on that ever since. And you know, that's a um, really sort of what I feel is a crucial product to the, to the ecosystem. It really you know, has its place. Um, I've talked about it before as sort of a block explorer or um, a search engine or anything else, but it's, you know, it's really a, a hub, especially we want it to be a developer hub in the future for people to get involved. Um, you know, later down the line when Chainlink went live and throughout last year, a lot of, I suppose, outside of the development that we've been doing, a lot of the focus has been um, being alongside Chainlink's growth that is on different networks, you know, bolstering infrastructure, growing the team, um, and everything else. And now, you know, we're in a, a really good position come this year. We're thinking about launching Nodes of Service, which I'm talking about now. We revamped the entire um, staking app and like our on token model, if you've if you've seen that, and you know, really still growing the team and thinking about how we can still um, grow the ecosystem out and really just build more tools and make it easier for people to use Chainlink, to be honest. So I mean, I've talked about it already, but yeah, we're announcing the open source nodes of service platform. And I suppose key phrase there is open source and platform. So what is it? And I mean, I suppose, sorry, these slides could be a bit dry. It's just, um, there's no pretty pictures or like wireframes or anything, but you know, we was a couple of weeks out from being able to actually do a live demo, but we didn't want to rush anything. So you know, it's, it might be a little bit dry, but happy to speak about it. Um, the node as a service platform is completely different to what we were thinking about way back, you know, way back when in 2018, and that it's going to be a marketplace of providers. And what I mean by providers it is different teams who offer nodes as a service. So that could be link pool, it could be you know other large um, like node teams, people who run a lot of nodes across different networks for Chainlink already. It could be unrelated DevOps teams who just want to offer infrastructure products. It's supporting all blockchain networks going forward, um, which especially over last year and this year is, is really fundamental to this product and idea, especially to be alongside Chainlink's growth and to be growing with the Chainlink team, especially considering how, cha how much Chainlink has grown itself over the past 18 months. So for us to support all different networks is very important um, and open source. So anyone can provide uh, nodes of service. And I'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Um, so the solution to this is what we're building to make this happen for us and ourselves as, as Linkpool, we're going to be open sourcing the backend services, so the APIs and the infrastructure templates for the deployment of nodes. Um, the open source APIs themselves will work hand in hand with the infrastructure templates to manage all the CRUD actions for deployment. So if, if you're thinking about being, being a provider for, um, for Chainlink nodes, you don't have to worry about you know, how nodes are deployed. You don't have to worry about billing. You don't have to worry about like termination if you know, like billing expires or the subscription expires. All of what we're building now will be open sourced and we'll just be plug and play for other teams and node operators and anyone else to be able to just hook in and support it themselves. So it ties back to the initial problem. Um, this is powered by the Chainlink market backend. And for us to, you know, to have that code base in place and to have that sort of hardened service that manages all of this is very key. You know, it gives us features like being able to list nodes that are deployed via NAS like automatically on the market, show all the metrics for them, um, like give people ways to be able to one-click adapters, for example. So what you see like on the adapters list on the marketplace, then that will turn into what you can deploy on your Chainlink node. So the market really becomes the, 
you know, the backbone and the, the foundation for you to be able to get one click deploy services on your chain link node, mixing in the data providers that we list in there and everyone else, um, which just uh, solidifies the uh, self service model. And all of the billing for this, you know, it's, it's still always going to be on chain. We're going to have uh, like on chain subscriptions and registries. And again, to go back to the initial problem, we want to make this as transparent as, prob uh, as possible, having um, like on chain contracts that show the registries, the providers, um, you know, the subscriptions about who's buying nodes off of who, and to be able to get stats and metrics and to see you know, how this service looks from a top down and for people to be able to pull their own analytics from it, which is really important to give a transparent picture about this centralization risk again, like how many nodes are with what provider. Some of the features of nodes as a service are one-click deploy adapters. Um, you know, even though a lot of this, especially for adapters, is quite simple, um, especially if you've worked in DevOps, you're familiar with Docker and maybe serverless functions and different tools, just having, you know, even for someone like me who's, who's done it a million times, just having a, a one-click UI to just make this really simple is nice. It, it just it shortens the, the time it takes for you to support and deploy new adapters in an environment that will also be production ready. Um, we will be including like a monitoring stack with built-in dashboards. So, you know, with nodes as a service, we're not just thinking about deploying the Chainlink node in itself, but deploying a series of services within a cluster. Um, so that will be like Grafana, for example, with built-in like dashboards, like dashboards we've built to be able to just give people a, an instant like view of how their node is performing, the ability to be able to live tail and search your logs. Like that won't just be like in a GUI as well to be able to search in live tail. You'll also have like CLI support and a lot of this isn't, specifically like bespoke or custom built, we're trying to in incorporate as much sort of open source tooling and like CNCF um, tooling as well, if, if people are familiar with that term, but it's like the um, sort of the, the cloud um, foundation for, for tooling. Um, automatic version updates as well. So a really hands-off approach so that the providers themselves will manage the version updates across all the nodes that they offer. And with that, it keeps you up to date with all the latest chaining functionality. So you as a, you know, a person who's a developer coming in and thinking about integrating Chainlink or even um, like providing sort of custom integrations or, or trying to get in on, on Chainlink feeds, being able to keep up to date with the latest Chainlink functionality like CCIP, being able to talk cross chain without having to worry about the, the full nodes, you know, the, the privacy features like Deco and the generic OCR V2. Now it's very important because you don't have to worry about all of that. The, the platform that we're building really just helps, um, you know, just get the, the chain link nodes to, to run themselves essentially and, and lower the, the skill curve for you to get involved with the network. So to talk about the actual roadmap, happy to say this, you know, this, even though it's a bunch of slides, it will be out pretty soon. So we're looking at an initial release in Q3, Q4 this year. Um, Node as a service itself has been under development for quite some time now. Um, really proud of the team and what they've built so far. The solution that we've put together is, is really quite impressive. And the, the people who are building this as well are really excited because you know, you've got like infrastructure products within the blockchain, whether it's like Infura, QuickNode, um, even Anchor, for example, where you can deploy numerous um, like different blockchain services. No one's really built a, a marketplace for people to offer their own services to other people, like a marketplace um, for, for all of this. So you know, there's a, a real excitement about the people working on this and what we're doing with the solution and really can't wait to see it take shape. Initially, um, it'll only be like testnet nodes from us, um, by us on your link pool, and you'll get the online portal to view your logs, UI and metrics and everything else. So really um, sort of everything in place, especially for developers, I, I suppose I want to emphasize the initial release is really, really tailored for developers, people um, who want to bring their APIs on chain, for example, and develop chain link support for them and offer their data directly, test it on test nets. Uh, developers who are building D apps who want to just sort of verify and think about how they can get um, different data on chain. 
so the initial release is really tailored to sort of developers and people thinking about how you can use Chainlink or even like budding uh, people within the blockchain space who want to learn. Um, and then the further releases, so like 2021 and beyond, um, the support for other blockchains. So that will be everything that Chainlink supports going forward, which will keep on growing. Mainnet, third-party providers, and with that will come billing and subscriptions. So, you know, really excited to show more about this. We've got UI designs. We've got a lot of the infrastructure, the back-end services in place. You know, it's, it's all about sort of stitching that together and, and making a polished product. So hope you enjoy, all enjoyed the talk and um, look forward to uh, showing more. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Johnny. So many legends taking the stage today. You'll love to see it. It's day three of SmartCon and the party isn't even close to stopping. 